It's your bud. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about one of my fan theories for One Piece. Now, there will be some spoilers in here, so if you want to watch it spoiler-free, then watch it from the beginning and enjoy. I really, really recommend it. It's one of my favorite anime ever. It's absolutely incredible. There's a lot of slow parts. There's a lot of filler. There's a ton of stuff. It's sort of like, it sort of suffered the same thing as Naruto and Bleach, where there's a lot of filler arcs that are bad. However, we're going to be talking about one of the filler arcs that is probably the best part of the entire show. It is, in fact, my favorite arc of the entire series, and I didn't even know it was filler until a few years ago. So we're going to be talking about the G8 arc, or the Navarone arc. Now, my theory is actually about Nami, and please don't get angry at me for my pronunciation. My pronunciation might just be all over the place in this video. I'm not used to saying these characters' names out loud, so yeah, let's continue. Nami's the navigator of the crew of the Straw Hats, the main characters of One Piece, who are searching for the One Piece, their treasure. And yeah, in this arc, the G8 or Navarone arc, there are two people that I thought could really be fitting for Nami's parents. Now, before we get into that, I think I should quickly mention what Navarone comes from. Now, there was this old movie that I had seen years ago with my father. It was called Guns of Navarone. And my computer's freezing right now. Uh, my computer just froze. Hang on, I'll be back in a moment. <laughs> okay, yes, yeah, so my computer just froze and I couldn't even click over to uh, the tab I had open on the internet. So there's The Guns of Navarone. It's a film from the 1960s, but it was actually based on a book. And the book is about, I quote here from Wikipedia, an impregnable German fortress threatening the allied naval ships in the Aegean Sea. And sorry if you can hear some banging. It seems like my neighbor's doing some construction. So I'm just going to get this video done quick. They've been doing construction the past few days, but yeah, we just got to get this video done anyways regardless. So Guns of Navarone was about this fortress with these giant cannons and it was impregnable and these soldiers had to go in and like, I don't know, it kind of reminded me of like the, the whole eagle's nest thing where there's like, oh well we have to go in, take out this or whatever, but imagine if the eagle's nest was a giant impregnable fortress. And so that fortress in from the movie The Guns of Navarone was then put into its own island, the Navarone Island. So the island of Navarone is the center of the G8 arc. Now G8 stands for the military group in charge of Navarone in One Piece. There are many different regiments of marines in many different places in One Piece, but the ones in charge of Navarone are the G8. Now I absolutely love this arc, and like I said in the beginning, if you want to watch One Piece with no spoilers, then watch it from the beginning. However, if you don't care about spoilers for the story, and you just want a good place to jump in and learn the characters, I highly recommend starting with the first episode of the Navarone arc. It starts with something that I cannot say because it is a really, really big spoiler, something that completely caught me off guard, but the place they come from to get to Navarone is the spoiler, so I can't say where they were before this, but the arc of Navarone starts with them coming into the island of Navarone. And then there's a whole bunch of uh, just hilarious things that ensue. It's absolutely great. They all get separated from their ship. And then there's this guy, this captain, this captain, actually no, he's a vice admiral. He's the G8 vice admiral and he's named Jonathan. And he's out fishing when the straw hats arrive in Navarone. And then there's this whole chase around the entire island. They find the ship and the straw hats have abandoned it. And the straw hats just completely ran away and they, they realized, okay, we'll come back and save the ship later, but we need to get away so we don't get captured with the ship. So the Marines with Jonathan in charge find this ghost ship, and Jonathan's just kind of like, I don't know, he's this playful kind of commander. He's a bit more laid back, so he's like, oh, is this a ghost ship, jokingly? And then all the other Marines are like, oh no, is this a ghost ship? Is this really? The commander just said it's a ghost ship. And I don't know, so he's, he's a kind of funny character like that. I really, really like him. And then there's this also this other guy, I think his name's Spandum. He's this like, um, he's like an inspector that's coming from the Marine headquarters to inspect G8, because don't you know G8 is known as this lazy place that doesn't get attacked by pirates. It hasn't been attacked in years. What's the point of even having an impregnable fortress if pirates don't attack it? So this guy shows up, the Spandum shows up about the same time as the Straw Hats are attacking, and this whole thing becomes, look, 
there's a proof that Navarone needs to be here to fight pirates because the Straw Hats are pirates and they just appeared out of nowhere. Like I said, it's a spoiler where they came from before this arc, but it's a hilarious thing. So they appear and they come into Navarone and they abandon their ship, Jonathan captures it, and then the entire rest of the arc is the crew interacting with Marines and trying to hide. So let's see, Luffy and Sanji, Sanji's the cook, they go to the kitchen and they meet this girl called Jessica in the kitchen. Jessica is someone that Sanji instantly falls in love with and the food that she cooks is something that Luffy falls instantly in love with. So those two show up and they show up at the same time. So remember that inspector that showed up, uh, Spandam, the inspector who's inspecting Navarone also arrived with two other people, two really high class chefs from Marijoie. Again, I don't know how to pronounce Marijoie because I've only seen it written, but that's the place where the celestial dragons or the rulers of the worldwide government live. So two super important chefs were supposed to show up and then when Sanji and Luffy just walk into the kitchen, they're assumed to be those chefs. So there's a lot of trouble, a lot of fun that ensues. There's a cooking battle. And Sanji shows these uh, chefs of Navarone the importance of what you need to be to be a good cook on the sea. And it's really, really great. It just really ties into Sanji's backstory about him and how he was starving before and how he realized you never waste any food. And he, he really, really inspires these chefs of Navarone. It's really, really great. And yes, yeah, so we meet this woman named Jessica in the kitchen and she's just basically like she's super in charge you do not want to get her angry at you <laughs> even though marines she's like whipping the marines into shape that's how much of a taskmaster she is and then there's some other things that happen let's see uh let's see Usopp is Usopp is really connected to the ship because the ship was given to him by a woman that he really really likes and so he's super ultra overprotective of his ship and he gets to have some conversations with one of the shipyard attendants or one of the people in charge of the shipyards at Navarone and there's some really good back and forth and that's when we start to learn about the mystery of Clabouter Man which I can't get into because this video will just go on forever. Like I said I didn't realize this arc was filler because it ties into so many people's backstories however it feels now that I realize it is filler, it feels like a love letter. We have Sanji and Luffy going to the kitchen. We have Usopp learning possibly about Clabouter Man, and that's really, really interesting. And that's like, a, it's a spirit that fixes the ship. He was talking about like, oh, the, fi the ship got fixed when our place where we were before we came to Navarone. And no one believes, wait, how did you get to Navarone? Where were you before? How did your ship get fixed? And so Usopp has this great conversation. So there's also this really funny part where Usopp and Robin try to impersonate the exact same person, except Robin shows up with actually like official clothes and badges and things like that. So Usopp gets thrown into jail. It's actually pretty funny. Let's see, Chopper goes and he actually, um, actually starts becoming a doctor because he sees a whole bunch of people got wrecked by some uh, tidal like whirlpools or something outside and yeah they were going through the comm belt and a whole bunch of marines were injured so he just starts being a doctor and he starts whipping the doctors into shape just as Sanji was doing for the cooks and then Nami and Zoro have some more hilarious interactions Nami ends up sort of uh, working with Chopper to end up as a nurse and Nami's skills are really put to the test in this arc as one of the key defenses of Navarone is its natural defenses that that Nami must overcome using her navigating, of which I will not spoil. So yeah, there's a big challenge that her navigating requires to overcome that challenge if she wants to save the Straw Hat crew and let them escape the island. And Zoro's just going around all over. He gets captured first, and there's a whole bunch of like funny bits in the jail. The way they escape from the jail in Navarone is absolutely hilarious. I'm not going to spoil this arc uh, because it is it is really my favorite arc out of all of One Piece. Out of all how many hundreds of hours of One Piece I've probably watched, this is my favorite thing. So everyone is put to the test in this arc and everyone shows their skills. And so it turns out that that Vice Admiral Jonathan and that woman in the kitchen, Jessica, are actually husband and wife. And Jonathan has red hair and Jessica's a bit of, I don't know, you could like a spitfire personality. And when you put those two together, they seem like a perfect couple, but there seems to be something there that doesn't really be touched on. I don't know. It seems like those two are such a great couple, but there almost seems to be something missing. I don't know. I feel like if those two had had a child previously and that child was lost at sea and that it turned out to be Nami, I think it'd be absolutely crazy. I think it'd be a really fitting thing. So this is just a weird fan theory that I just wanted to share with you because I'm feeling a bit awful today and I don't really have time to write up a script. I'm just doing this as a rant. This is unscripted. I'm just ranting my opinion. But when I saw Vice Admiral Jonathan and how he's sort of laid back, sort of go with the flow, he's a fisherman, he notices the 
details in the environment. That seems to be his skill. And then Jessica was this sort of like commanding, uh, very present woman, very powerful. And when you combine those two personalities, it seems to me to be a perfect mix of what Nami is. Nami will like be super greedy, but she'll be like, oh, look, I noticed the weather's going to change in an instant. She'll be super strong. She'll be the only one that can make like Zoro and Luffy like actually do what they're supposed to and get those men into line. And I don't know. So I just think if Jonathan and Jessica, the vice admiral and uh, head cook of Navarone, had a child in their past and that child was somehow swept away and then saved by Bellamere. Like, wouldn't that be very, very interesting? So who do you think Nami's parents are? If there's a clue that I've missed, then let me know down below because I don't think there's ever been a clue on Nami's actual parents. We knew about Bellamere. We knew that Bellamere found Nami somewhere. We knew that Nami was basically an orphan, but we don't know who her actual parents were. I'm always curious to find out if it'll eventually go Celestial Dragon because... I don't know, I think that would be an interesting one, but personally, my personal opinion, I think the best parents that Nami could have would be Vice Admiral Jonathan and the head cook Jessica from the G8 Navarone arc. And yeah, like I said, it's my absolute favorite arc. I don't want to spoil it, so I just wanted to give you the intro to what, what some of the things that go down are, but there's some hilarious ways how they escape the jail, there's fights, there's, I don't know, there's tons of jokes, there's hilarious things, and, and I don't know, I just, I don't even want to get into it because every Every single moment is my favorite part of One Piece. So go watch the G8 arc, which is also known as the Navarone Island arc. Yeah, and you will not be disappointed. If you don't want any spoilers, then don't start with this arc because it starts with something that's a pretty big spoiler for the entire series of One Piece. Now, it's not like a it's not a game ending spoiler if you find out about it, but it, it, it'll take away from the excitement of learning this thing for real in the actual pace of the story. When I was watching the story for the first time myself and I came upon the arc that happens just before the G8 arc, I was blown away that they even had the balls to do that. I did not think that they would ever ever go to an island like they did in the previous island before Navarone or the G8 arc. But yeah, the G8 arc starts in a hilarious place and it ends with just such a heartwarming story. And Jonathan just turns out to be such a, I don't know, like uh, Luffy and Jonathan butt heads all the time, but Jonathan doesn't seem to be the type of person that gets angry that he's being challenged. He almost, he like rises up to the challenge. He's like, oh, you're going to challenge me, are you? Well, then I'm not going to back down. And he, he, I don't know, he's he's so like determined in what his goal is, but he will also... He'll also admit defeat to pirates that defeat him, which is what makes the ending so heartwarming because the ending of this, there's that weird Admiral Spandom who's like, who's someone sent from the headquarters and he's like yelling at Jonathan, Jonathan, you're too late back. What's the point of this fortress? What's the this? What's the that? And then Jonathan really kicks it into high gear to capture these pirates and it's, it's an all out fight between Jonathan and his Marines in the G8 and Luffy and his crew of the Straw Hats and I think it's just a great great challenge for Luffy and his crew, and I could not believe it when I learned that this was a filler arc. It hurts my soul to know that this wasn't made by the original person, but like it feels like it was made with such love that I've fallen in love with this arc. So go watch the G8 arc, which has the island of Navarone inspired from the 1960s film Guns of Navarone inspired by a book, Guns of Navarone. And yeah, I really, really do love the island. I was so, so shocked when I saw, what, they have Navarone in one piece? I thought that was a great reference, but learning that it's filler, it still doesn't make it any less great for me. So go watch this. It has the two people that I believe would be the most fitting parents for Nami, Vice Admiral Jonathan and the head chef of the G8, Jessica. I think those two people are the perfect fitting parents for Nami. Who do you think Nami's parents are? Let me know down below. Do you think they were just some random people on an island that Bellamere was at and managed to save the child of? Or do you think Nami's parents has some greater purpose that's yet to be revealed in the story of One Piece? I still can't decide whether I think it would be better or worse for Nami to just be a regular person that joined the Straw Hats, which there's uh, admittedly very few regular people that have joined the Straw Hats, or if her parents are much more than that. Same with Zoro's parents. Uh, again, if you know these details down below, if I've missed them, then just let me know. I'm, I, don't, I don't have time to always catch up on One Piece. There's too much One Piece to always be catching up with it. So if you know some of those answers down below, such as who's Nami's parents are, or anything like that, then let me know. Or let me know who you think Nami's parents are, or who you think would be the best 
idea for it, even if it's just something that you made up, even if it's some characters you made up or some idea you've thought up, let me know down below. So thanks for watching everyone. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Sorry that it's not scripted. I do have a really cool idea on something that I learned about the other day. It's this really, really neat Tibetan idea that I learned about and I'm going to try to make a good scripted video for it in the next few days. Um, yeah, I'm working on that behind the scenes. So thanks for watching everyone. Hopefully you enjoy. Go watch some One Piece. It's on Netflix now. I don't think episode... So episode 196 to episode 206 are the G8 arcs. 196 to 206. So for episodes 196 to 206, you can watch the G8 arc. Like I said, I don't think those episodes are up on Netflix yet. I think they only have the first few seasons on Netflix, but I did notice it was finally put up onto Netflix the other day. So I'm excited. Summertime is the time when I watch One Piece. When I'm feeling super warm and I'm feeling like my apartment is boiling with heat, I just turn on some One Piece and watch the cool seas and the breeze. And it just, it helps me mentally cool myself down to watch a bunch of One Piece and a bunch of people sailing on the seas. It's almost time for me to get back and to start watching it again. Thanks for watching everyone. Now go watch some One Piece. That's what I'm going to do. Leave a like if you want some more One Piece theories. I have a bunch already such as the is the red poneglyph the red line theory video. Go check that out. It'll be linked at the end. Uh, you can subscribe for daily videos. I make at least one video every single day and leave any questions or suggestions in the comments below and I'll see you in tomorrow's video. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Nami, 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 nami.